Hello, everyone. My name is Alex, your artificially created guide for today from Unitsoft Company. Today, I'm introducing demand forecasting tool in our new web SCM system. The presentation promises to be exciting. Forecasting demand with artificial intelligence. How does it work? Get ready to take off. We're heading into the future of business. Hello, Alex, and hello to the viewers. My name is Max. I'm interested in improving sales forecasting business processes, and I'm ready to delve into the intricacies of your innovative approach. So Alex, don't keep the audience waiting. Why is demand forecasting so crucial for business? Great question, Max. Understanding demand is like a superpower for any business. Accurate forecasts mean optimized inventory levels, no product shortages or overages, fewer changes in production plans, and even better optimization of marketing tools. It's like a magical crystal ball. I see, it seems like a valuable tool for any business that sells products. Exactly, Max. Especially for those involved in consumer goods sales, pharmaceuticals, or other products with volatile demand. Our AI-based system peers into the future and predicts demand with high accuracy, providing a significant competitive edge. Sounds enticing. Let's delve deeper into this innovative solution and explore its practicality for businesses aiming to boost efficiency. Moving on, let's delve into the forecast analysis and understand the critical input data behind it. Section 2 will give us a general understanding into how predictions are shaped in Web SCM. Upon entering the application, you land on the Data Analysis Dashboard. Here, actual and forecasted sales are displayed as well as various influencing factors such as marketing, advertising campaigns, seasonal fluctuations, trends, and KPI. This section enables an analysis of sales structure, the impact of different factors, and the assessment of forecast accuracy, both company-wide and for specific products, brands, or categories. However, before we dive into analyzing the program's results, I'd like to provide some context about the input data. Today, we're examining a monthly forecasting example from one company based on sales history over the last five years, along with data on marketing campaigns and television advertising for the products. Forecast calculations were conducted with a 12-month horizon. Using this case study, we'll try to gauge how accurately the system performs its tasks and which forecasting techniques are most effective. When you talk about forecast calculations, are you referring to artificial intelligence or are some mathematical models being used? In WebSCM, we combine various forecasting methods from time-tested statistical methods to modern neural networks. But what's important for businesses is the system automatically selects the optimal method for each specific task and planning object. Moreover, the system can save alternative forecast versions made using different algorithms. It's precisely these that we'll analyze today to understand the advantages artificial intelligence-based algorithms offer us. We are moving to Section 3, titled Key Results and Metrics. Here, we'll explore the main KPI calculated at the SKU level. For that, we move to the list of calculations where we can find all the detailed calculation results. There's a lot of detail on the screen. What are we seeing in this table? In this table, each row represents the aggregate data for an individual calculation object, in this case, SKU. Depending on the system settings, calculations can be made for different levels of detail, including product groups, sales channels, or even individual clients. We will look into more detailed settings later. I see. Today we are looking at the overall forecast broken down by products for the entire company. What is represented in the columns? In Web SCM. We call the numerical data in columns, measures. When you hover the mouse pointer over the column header, a tooltip appears showing the name of this measure as well as the calculation formula if it exists for this column. Measures can display both aggregated actual data and calculation results. In terms of forecast indicators, there can be not only sales forecasts, but also inventory levels, recommended replenishments, or any calculated KPI. We'll discuss how to set up measures in one of our upcoming videos. In the list of calculations, you'll find predefined measures. The sales forecast for the next month in monetary units and item quantity. Next are the forecast accuracy indicators, and the first one is forecast accuracy, abbreviated as FA. This measure shows how precisely, in percentages, we predicted sales for each calculation period. 
the values in this column are color highlighted based on the forecast accuracy level. In Web SCM, conditional cell formatting is preset, but you can customize it as you wish. Indeed. Alex, the color coding similar to traffic lights is very convenient for visually highlighting positions that need attention. Forecasting accuracy is one of the key indicators that can significantly influence other KPIs and company profitability. Will we delve into its calculation and values using specific examples? Absolutely, Max. Since FA is the main indicator that we will be looking at in our video, we will thoroughly go through its calculation and the meaning of the values. However, in Web SCM, statistical indicators such as MAD, bias, and others are also available for accuracy assessment, but we'll discuss that later. Thank you for the detailed answer, Alex. I noticed that the table rows have embedded bar charts and there are a few more columns to the right. What do they represent? The bar charts and the rows are designed to visualize the sales dynamics. They show data for the last three periods of actual sales and the first three periods of forecast. The additional columns on the right contain absolute sales values for actual and forecast for these periods, as well as the percentage change relative to the previous period. Colored indication also helps to highlight periods with more or less significant demand changes. At the end of the table, data for the last 12 months of sales and a forecast for the next 12 months are displayed. Everything looks very detailed and informative. But we planned for more than three months ahead, right? Yes you've rightly noticed. This tool provides a short-term overview, but its value lies in that you can use it to identify product positions that require additional analysis and then delve deeper into those selected positions. For instance, you can sort the data by descending forecast accuracy or by forecasted sales volumes for the upcoming months and then conduct a detailed analysis of those positions. I agree with you, Alex. The navigation tool for the list of calculations is quite convenient but I would like to delve deeper into how the forecasts themselves are structured and how their reliability can be verified. Of course, Max. Let's start our analysis with the product that has the highest forecasted sales volume for the next month and take a detailed look at it. Transitioning now to our fourth section, we'll be exploring the benefits of AI prediction. We'll dive deeper into Web SCM insights at the SKU level and unravel the intricacies of individual product forecasting. To do this, just one click on the arrow in the left column, and we will go to the detailed calculation form. Another click will expand this form to full screen for a clearer analysis. We've just opened the form and looking at the chart, I noticed significant fluctuations in our product sales and perhaps some seasonal component. I also noticed that the table here has much more data than the previous calculations list. What useful information can we glean from this form? Upon entering the detailed form, unlike the previous list, the measures for this calculation are presented in rows and in columns, we have forecast accuracy and data periods, in our case, months. Here, we will see forecasts generated by the AI-based algorithm, as well as simple forecasts calculated using traditional forecasting algorithms, such as moving average and autoregression. Could you specify which source data is used in these algorithms? Certainly. Let's delve deeper into the input data and the system's outcomes. First about the input data. Sales history. These are actual sales that are loaded from an external system. Sales overrides. These are adjusted sales used if there's a need to modify the source data before forecasting. Why might such an adjustment be needed? The software can automatically identify anomalous periods, however, Manual adjustments might be necessary if there's knowledge about specific events that influence sales and which can't be captured by the algorithms. For instance, if there was a major deal that won't be repeated in the future or if there were hidden anomalies that algorithms miss. Also, manual adjustments can be useful to create a forecast based on alternative data. For example, if we see a drop in sales due to a production halt, we might take the average sales from several previous months and use that to fill in the cells with zero sales for that period. So we have a complete sales history and we can make our own adjustments if necessary? Exactly. In the final sales row, the sales volume is displayed taking into account the adjustments made. These data are used in Web SCM for forecasting and for assessing forecast accuracy.
Notice that the checkbox in the first column indicates that the data for this measure are also represented in the histogram. This is the gray line on the chart. So using the checkboxes, we can control the data on the chart. That's convenient. Exactly. Let's continue examining the input data. We'll display the exclude periods measure on the chart. This measure is used for AI training and indicates periods when significant unforeseen factors were in play. It also informs the system that such events are not planned for the future. Does this help improve forecast accuracy? Yes, and it also allows us to evaluate how much these factors influence the change in sales. Now, regarding the input data, sales price is used for monetary assessments. In our example, the measures, COVID-19, TV promo, and discount are used by the system to account for and evaluate their contribution to sales volume. As we can see, the periods affected by COVID-19 are filled with ones, which for the software signifies the impact of this factor in a particular period. The reach of the TV advertising audience is reflected in the TV promo measure and the promotional discount is set as a percentage during its action in the discount measure. That's all for the input data. Now we can move on to the forecasts themselves. It's truly important that the software accounts for marketing activities, but is it possible to take into account external factors such as weather, competitor activity, or price differences with competing products? Leveraging multiple additional factors helps train the AI and enhance forecasting accuracy. The software will itself determine which of these factors genuinely affect demand and which do not. In our example, we displayed the most common factors influencing sales. However, you can also incorporate any other factors or events you believe might impact sales. Now, let's move to the most exciting part. The next three metrics represent sales forecasts created using three different algorithms. The first one is AI forecast. This is our most advanced algorithm based on artificial intelligence that takes into account additional factors. In this instance, we also employed the autoregression algorithm. In this algorithm, we can also include additional factors. In its current setup, it considers seasonal and trend components, as well as all the factors from our list above. The moving average-based forecasting algorithm is the simplest and perhaps for that reason is widely used. To be honest, Alex, I'm amazed at how closely the sales forecast line matches the actual sales especially given that the actual sales chart looks quite complex and one could say unpredictable. Aren't you embedding data from future periods to train your algorithms to predict the past so accurately? Max, your question is very logical. To choose the best algorithm, we always use simulation, meaning we train our algorithms only on data up to the forecast point. In other words, when we forecast, for example, May of the current year, we use data only up to April, the month preceding the forecast. This allows us to fairly assess the reliability of the algorithms and their ability to predict the future based on historical data. In the upcoming videos, we will demonstrate how you can adjust simulation periods and assess forecast accuracy for a year ahead using artificial intelligence and other methods. I hope you've already subscribed to our channel so you don't miss these interesting videos. Okay, I understand that simulation plays a key role in evaluating the accuracy of algorithms. However, the AI forecast showed the highest accuracy at 86%, while the other algorithms showed accuracy levels of 67% and 63%. I'm curious to know why this happened and how much can we trust the AI forecast? It's important to note that you can trust the algorithm that demonstrates the best accuracy. We evaluated the average accuracy over the last 12 months. In Web SCM, the best algorithm is highlighted in bold and its data is used to create the final sales forecast, which is presented in the 13th row. If we look at the forecast curves generated using autoregression or moving averages, we can see that they are also accurate in certain periods. However, they are less able to capture complex trends and the influence of certain factors. For example, autoregression struggles with pivotal trends, and a moving average is an inertial mechanism that reacts to fluctuations with a certain delay, which negatively affects forecast accuracy. In this context, the AI forecast demonstrated a higher ability to adapt to complex data patterns, leading to higher accuracy in its forecasts. There's a joke that even a broken clock is right twice a day, 
but how can we verify and analyze accuracy in your software? Starting from row 14, we display the achieved accuracy for each month for each algorithm. Color coding is also used here to easily identify significant deviations in accuracy within the table. To check the accuracy of the AI forecast algorithm, we can highlight 12 periods in row 15 and see the summary statistics for the selected cell range at the bottom. As you can see, the weighted average accuracy here is 86%, and this evaluation is indicated in row 9 for this algorithm. We do the same cell highlighting in row 17 to determine the accuracy of the moving average algorithm and see that its accuracy was 63%. This figure is stated in row 11. Thus, there's no doubt that the AI forecast algorithm showed the best accuracy here. It seems everything is clear with accuracy. I also see a series of effect measures below. What do they tell us? This is a real candy store. Just look at the chart and I'll turn on the effect measures, factors that influence sales for historical and forecasted sales. Here's what they represent. Steady sales. This is the level of sales that remains consistent over time. Trend. This is the general direction of change in sales over time, either up or down. Seasonal effect. These are regular changes in sales related to the season or other cyclical factors. TV promotion. This effect reflects the influence of TV advertising on sales. Discount. This effect shows how discounts affect sales volume. COVID-19. This displays the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on sales. Exceptions. These are factors designated by the user as exceptions that might influence sales. Residual deviations. This is the remaining volume that cannot be explained by other effects. This picture speaks for itself. There's a trend with two turning points, the influence of promotions and seasonal contributions. I also notice episodic support from TV advertising and steady sales. But there are also negative factors. Alex, what could this be? Here we have several factors that have a negative impact on sales volume. The first one is the residual. This is what the program could not attribute to any of the active factors, and it also includes the forecasting error on the historical period. When the residuals are small, we can trust the estimates of the impact of other factors on sales more. The negative impact drop in sales in certain periods is explained by the exclude period factor, which was active from February to May 2022. Upon preliminary analysis, we detected the largest deviations in sales and knew it was related to active hostilities in Ukraine. Therefore, we included this factor in the exclusion category. Further on, when the impact of this factor decreased, we see an increasing sales trend. It's important to note that the program has correctly learned to account for this factor and it won't affect the accuracy of future forecasts. Yes, Alex. Sometimes we have to take into account such tragic events as military actions and their impact on sales. It seems to me that the ability to adapt to different situations and provide accurate forecasts will allow replacing the analyst in case of limited resources or his unavailability. But it seems that artificial intelligence in WebSCM successfully handles this task. We continuously improve our product by incorporating smart technologies and other tools. However, the accuracy of forecasts depends on considering all factors and correctly modeling the behavior of customers and products. Your company may have characteristics that aren't always captured in historical data. Experts or managers familiar with your business can help enhance the forecast. Sometimes historical data isn't informative enough and you have to plan for events that didn't happen before. If you're introducing new products or changing the assortment, it also impacts the forecast. Our product offers several ways to adjust the forecast. You can set sales target plans by filling in the cells in the forecast overrides row. In doing so, we not only change the target sales forecast, but also retain the system calculated forecast. You can see how the forecast curve changes after such adjustments. Indeed, this is a wonderful feature. This tool is also suitable for developing plans for your sales team, right? Exactly. In Web SCM, you can set plans for your sales team or even create financial plans. Regardless of the complexity of your sales team structure or planning objects, you can configure this in WebSCM.
I have so many more questions, but I'd also like to see the forecast for other products. Perhaps there will be a different picture. No problem, Max. Let's look at the forecast for another product position. For that, I will switch to the list of calculations and select the next product for analysis. I see here as well that AI forecast has a higher prediction accuracy than auto regression and moving average, although the moving average also gave a higher accuracy than auto regression. I thought that auto regression was a more advanced algorithm. How can you explain this, Alex? Let's break this down. First, let's look at what factors were included in this forecast. For that, we'll take all available factors. On the chart, you can see that most of the factors are not set, except for the COVID-19 and exclude periods factors. This means that in this case, we are relying only on historical sales data and the seasonal fluctuations embedded in them. Now let's look at the chart predicted by the autoregression algorithm. You will see that, starting from 2021, the forecast line while capturing the seasonal fluctuations is too high compared to our current sales trends, and this leads to its decreased accuracy in the latest periods. From the chart, it's evident that in 2021, the trend shifted from an increasing one to a declining one, and it seems the autoregression didn't pick up on this change. Your observation is accurate. Let's look at the forecast generated using the moving average. You'll see it's more aligned with our trend, albeit with some inertia, but this algorithm manages to sometimes predict our sales due to the absence of sharp demand fluctuations. So if the sales volatility is low, we can use simple formulas in Excel? Before answering your question, let's analyze the forecast accuracy over time periods. On the chart, I display forecasts using the moving average and the AI forecast, which is denoted by a blue line. I'm looking for accuracy values highlighted in red in the table, and we see three consecutive periods, starting from July 2022, with low forecast accuracy, both for the moving average and the autoregression. If we look at the sales curve predicted by the average, we can see that the local sales trend is downward, but the average still shows inflated sales. Only after a few periods does it start tracking the downtrend, although real sales are already on the rise. Yes, from this example, it's evident that the moving average forecast exhibits inertia, and for the forecasted periods, it's represented merely as a straight line without fluctuations. This probably won't help in accurately predicting sales. Your observations are correct and align with our experience. The moving average can only be used effectively in short-term forecasting for one or two periods with low sales volatility. Now, let's examine the sales structure modeled by artificial intelligence. First, I'll activate the seasonal effect calculated by AI forecast. We see that the most active month is November, and December also makes a significant contribution. Next, I'll add the trend and the contribution of steady sales. Now you can see and assess in numbers that pivotal trend you noticed earlier more clearly. Now I can clearly see what's happening with this product and where all of this is heading. But I also noticed that not in all cases do your columns representing factor contributions reach the line of actual sales. Can you explain why that happens? Let's turn on the COVID-19 effect, the effect of excluded periods, as well as the residuals and you will see that there is still a slight influence of these factors and minor residuals in the distribution. On the chart, it may appear as though the columns don't reach the line of actual sales or are above that line. Well, it seems everything is now balanced, and you can also see that there were losses during the period of military actions, and COVID-19 played both positively and negatively, albeit not significantly. And this analysis of past forecasts is so engaging that I almost forgot that our main task is to predict the future. The key to the future lies in the past. Understanding the contribution of factors, the work of marketing campaigns, television advertising, efforts to expand the product range, and much more allows a company not only to increase the accuracy of sales, but also to use marketing budgets very effectively, optimize working capital by placing the right assortment in the right places, and not only that, You've just changed my opinion about forecasting effectively using simple algorithms and spreadsheets like Excel. I realized that understanding demand drivers and being able to track their influence throughout the sales history is one of the most critical tools for any FMCG business.
For some companies, this might even be more crucial than striving for maximum accuracy. However, even when using such a powerful forecasting tool as WebSCM, not every company has the ability to closely monitor and analyze every product position, especially if the company's range includes tens of thousands of product positions. How can your program be helpful for companies with a broad product range? Transitioning to our fifth section, we delve into BI Powered Forecast Analytics. Here, we'll navigate the sophisticated tools Web SCM offers for businesses with extensive product ranges, ready to uncover the power of integrated business intelligence. Let's dive in. You're absolutely right, Max. To effectively manage a broad range of products, specialized BI tools are essential. And the system we've developed is truly unique in this regard. All our BI tools seamlessly integrate with forecasting, sales planning, inventory management, and production planning tools. This means that everything you see in the analysis dashboard and dashboard pivot tool represents real-time data. This allows you to easily dive deep into the details, view the source data, and quickly return to an overarching analysis and KPI. Our pivot grid really stands out among similar tools. It not only visualizes data, but also provides the ability to adjust plans directly at the group level with automatic decomposition. We'll delve into these features in more detail later. For now, let's continue our exploration of the interactive analysis dashboard. I'll click on the corresponding icon and we'll dive into data analysis. Thank you, Alex. I'm familiar with this tool, but now I have a better understanding of how the metrics displayed on the charts and tables work. Where does the data for ABC classification, brands, groups, and SKU come from? Is it loaded from an external system? Max, before I address your question, I'd like to emphasize a few key points. The screen you're currently viewing has been fully customized to cater to the specific needs of each workplace using a process mob. We're in the monthly sales forecasting workspace right now. Our tools adapt to different timeframes and planning frequencies. The principles remain consistent across all workspaces. However, the set of metrics and groupings can vary. Regarding analytical data, it's typically imported from external systems, but it can also be directly input or even calculated within WebSCM. Look, I've opened the object list in the master data menu, and here you see various analytical categories linked to SKU. We can add as many categories as needed. The ABC classification is calculated right here in WebSCM based on customizable parameters and is updated upon recalculations. In upcoming episodes on our channel, we will delve deeper into the system settings and its unique features. If you're intrigued by innovations in the logistics realm, do subscribe, like, and drop your queries. Those wishing to test the system with their company's data can follow the link in the description. Sounds promising. I believe many would be keen on trying it out in practice. To sum up, your software enables flexible customization of product categories and other groupings. And all this forms the basis for a consolidated analysis in various system dashboards and within different workspaces of WebSCM, right? Yes, Max, but it's important to note that we group information not only by items, but also by participants in the supply chain, which we refer to as subjects. Whether these subjects are your warehouses, production facilities, clients, logistical hubs, or distribution channels, you can analyze the data with any level of detail and group it. WebSCM enables analysis across all logistical processes and structures. But for now, let's focus on sales analysis and explore how to efficiently handle vast sales data. Got it, Alex. I understand the additional analytical categories and groupings. Moving to the dashboard, I'd like to highlight its distinctive navigation. The analysis dashboard displays various widgets that encompass both graphical and grid views of data. It's crucial to understand that all these widgets are interconnected by the data they display. When no filters, checkboxes are set in a grid, we see data across all categories. As I select the checkbox for category A in the ABC classification, only the products or groups of this category will be displayed in the chart and other grids. Multiple categories can be selected simultaneously. For instance, let's add category B. Then, by choosing specific brands and product groups, we'll immediately see a reduced list of products and the aggregate values for the selected items. Impressive interactivity, Alex. 
I see how the information on the chart and the totals in the grids update quite swiftly. I'm just unsure about what exactly is being displayed in these totals. As you can see, every widget displays a standard set of metrics. This means reviewing the same details as in the comprehensive calculations, but aggregated up to brands, groups, and so forth. Each widget contains a totals row that showcases aggregate results for all selected items. For instance, when selecting group 7, we immediately learn about the total number of products in this group by category, the related brands, and also get a full list of products within this group. If needed, each widget can be expanded or set to full screen. Impressive. It does remind me of pivot tables, but your system provides an interactive linkage between the widgets. It feels like there's information in any dimension one might wish to see. I believe many will appreciate analyzing data through charts. Trends and potential deviations become instantly noticeable. Absolutely. You can never have too many charts, and that's why for each widget we have multiple graphical representations. You could opt for a treat MAP for a visual exploration of sales structure or stick with traditional charts to investigate behaviors in any report across any grouping. Plus, each of our grids offers filtering capabilities, both by values and by condition, and also sorting. It's particularly handy when we aim to pinpoint poor or, conversely, top-performing KPI across entities. Alex, I have observed the potential to drill down from a macro view to more granular insights, exploring data and trends by categories, product groups, and even detailed positions. It's truly pivotal when managing an extensive assortment, but could you provide a specific case of working with this analysis? What can an analyst or manager accomplish with your tool in a real business scenario? Suppose we've just made a forecast and we're still unaware of the results we've obtained we need to check for any unexpected trends or poor forecast quality. Given that the product list might be extensive, it would be logical to start with the top selling category, Class A. I'll set the filter. We see that an accuracy of 86 on average for the category satisfies us. The program worked well, so we can move on to studying sales trends for category as a whole on the chart. We notice a decline in the next forecast period. It's not yet clear what this is linked to, Let's enable the visualization on the chart with measures contributing to sales volume. I'm adding measures for seasonality, trends, steady sales, promotions, and others. All metrics on the charts are presented in monetary terms. Indeed, there's a noticeable decline compared to the current period. Despite the rising trend, a seasonal drop is expected and there's no visible growth due to promotional offers and television activity. Upon further analysis, Category A is experiencing a decline with an average drop of 19% in June 2023. Suppose I am the manager responsible for groups 14 and 7. I notice that the total sales for these groups are down 27%. If we break it down, group 7 is on track for a more pronounced drop of 31%. In contrast, group 14 seems to be holding up slightly better with just a 6% decrease. My primary focus will be on addressing the challenges in Group 7. When filtering the data, we find four SKU that fall under this group. Specifically, SKU 003 is showing a concerning projected decline of 41%. It's evident that this SKU needs immediate attention. Reflecting on past strategies, it's clear that the discounts implemented last month had a positive effect on sales. It might be worth considering extending those discounts. Now. Let's transition to our next topic, modeling the effect of applying discounts. This will provide insights into how discounting decisions can influence future sales trajectories. I'm amazed. So not only do you analyze and highlight the impact of factors on past sales, but you can also model their influence on future sales. It seems quite sophisticated. Actually, it's quite simple and will take less than a minute. Just one click is required to jump into detailed calculations. As you might notice, there's no need to search for anything. All the filters from the analysis dashboard are automatically transferred to the detailed calculation. I'd open the relevant product and find the period of interest, June 2023. By clicking on the relevant part of the chart, I can quickly navigate to the desired position in the grid. Let's assume we can't launch a TV advertisement in time. So, as we discussed, we extend the ongoing discount. 
I copy the discount value from the previous period. As you can see, the forecast is automatically recalculated. In this case, the data for the factual period remains unchanged and there's no need to retrain the model. We forecasted an additional sales volume of about 2 million units due to the discount. This is reflected in the effect discount row. Now, we can go back to data analysis and see how this change impacted the overall business and other KPI. Going back to the analytics dashboard, I see that the sales drop for this product is now only 10%. If you recall, before the discount was applied, the drop was 41%. If you remove the filtering by groups, you can see that for the entire A category, we achieved only 5% of the predicted decline instead of the previous 19%. In other words, thanks to the 15% discount for one SKU, we modeled a revenue increase of up to 14% for the entire A category in the forecast month. In a real company, a manager could continue this analysis and promotional planning by working with other product lines as well. And of course, not only discounts, but also other usual methods can be used to stimulate sales, and Web SCM will help to evaluate their contribution to actual sales and forecast the effect of their application in the forecasted ones. Impressive! Sales modeling turned out to be simpler than I thought. I'm sure that for many companies, such modeling will help take corrective actions before problems even arise. Of course, when it comes to the effect of promotions, an analysis of campaign profitability will be required, and in many companies, it's alignment with management or other managers. Clearly, even such a forecasting model will serve as a clear tool for understanding what to expect from demand stimulation. Max, you're absolutely right in highlighting the need for additional calculations and approvals. If marketing campaigns have been conducted multiple times before, it's likely that their profitability was in good shape. However, in Web SCM, you can not only configure and calculate the effect of promotions on revenue, but also compute the impact of marketing activity on gross profit. I want to stress that modeling the effect of discounts on sales is just one of many potential scenarios in data work. There are numerous factors influencing sales, product shelf placement, its availability in retail chains, competitor promotions and prices, promotional materials, and many more. All of these can be modeled and planned in Web SCM. And on our YouTube channel, we'll continue our discussions on optimizing discount campaigns, the influence of competitor prices, and much more. Subscribe, and we'll keep bringing you new content. Thank you, Alex. This was a great demonstration of the program's capabilities and a vivid showcase of applying artificial intelligence to assist marketers and analysts. I believe many users will want to try the program in action and assess how effectively forecasting tasks are solved using their data. Submit a request on our website via the link in the video description and we'll arrange a test drive of the web SCM application based on your company's historical data. Moving on to the next and last section of our video, we present the pivot tool for optimized sales plan. This tool, which is the link between calculated forecasts and company plans, provides new possibilities to facilitate planning operations and data visualization. I know that many companies and users utilize OLAP-based tools or pivot tables for visual data analysis. Alex, you previously mentioned that you have a pivot tool with a data editing function. Can you tell us more about it? You're right, Max. And for those who have watched our video up to this point, stay tuned. Exclusive content is coming up next. Hit the like button and we'll continue. The pivot table in Excel is indeed a convenient and flexible tool for data analysis. However, we've always felt the need for a direct data editing capability within pivot tables for efficient sales, production, and purchasing planning, among others. We created such a tool and called it Pivot Tool. With it, you can visualize forecasts, set, and adjust plans, as well as decompose or aggregate data based on various criteria. Our Pivot Tool also ensures effective collaboration with colleagues, allowing plans to be segmented and maintaining a unified information environment, minimizing the risks of data duplication or desynchronization. Many companies have processes structured as sales and operations planning or integrated business planning. Was your pivot tool designed to automate these processes? Max, you've touched on a crucial topic. Our pivot tool is not just any tool. It's the central component for visualization setup 
and data management in the planning process. For basic tasks, it becomes an indispensable ally. However, when we talk about business giants with their intricate planning structures, we need something more potent. That's where our process model tool comes into play. It doesn't merely unify user plans with automatic calculations. It links the entire data stream from automated checks to integration with external systems. With it, you can not only analyze, but also act distributing tasks across the team. We'll delve deeper into its capabilities in one of our upcoming videos. But for today, let's take a look at a real life example, how a product assortment manager formulates sales plans for the next three months. Great, Alex. Preparing sales plans is a task many companies face. But as they say, seeing is believing. Please show us with an example. Currently, the Pivot tool displays data for the entire company. Let's go back to the Analysis dashboard, select the 7th and 14th product groups again. We previously established that these product groups are my area of responsibility. In the previous example, we managed to compensate for the drop in sales in June due to marketing campaigns. The chart shows that sales in July are also subject to a significant decline. Let's remember the July amount, it's just under 29 million. Suppose we receive an assignment from our manager to find ways to compensate for the seasonal drop in that month and reach at least 35 million. Additionally, we aim to optimize the product range by reducing the number of product positions in circulation. At the same time, we have an agreement with a supplier to increase sales for his product range by at least double. We click on the pivot tool to accomplish this task. As you can see, the product range and amounts displayed on the screen have changed and now correspond to those selected in the analysis dashboard. The selections set in the analysis dashboard are also applied to the data displayed in the pivot tool. I like this approach. The pivot tool is now functioning as another analytical perspective for viewing the selected data from the analysis dashboard. We observed a similar approach earlier with detailed data. Yes, that's right. We're working with a single data set, but our perspective is dynamic after all, it's based on the same pivot table. We can add groupings by product groups, move analytics to columns, or even eliminate unnecessary dimensions. All of this operates in real time, quickly and conveniently, and it can be displayed on a chart. For our task, we will keep the two groupings by brands and SKU in rows and by months in columns. Currently displayed on the screen are measures of forecast in base units, forecast in dollars, sales price, and a share of product cost expressed as a percentage of the total sales volume for the period. So far, it looks like a typical pivot table. Now let's get to work. Let's start with something simple. For brand no six, we need to sell 100,000 in July and 120,000 in August according to agreements with the supplier. Don't ask how this will be implemented in practice. I think many have faced such tasks. We're just reflecting the target plan. As you can see, after changing the total values, sales volumes and costs for the SKU of this brand have been recalculated. But the overall totals have also been updated. As I understand it, a proportional decomposition of the sum was made for products within the brand. Such a distribution is quite logical if we plan to conduct some kind of advertising or brand program. I agree with you, Max. Now, I'll save the data and then we'll move to the detailed calculation to see how the planned sales have changed for July and August. Let's open SKU 066. As you can see, the sales plans are set under forecast override. Now, our adjustments are reflected in the sales forecast. We can also observe adjustments in SKU 082, which is part of brand 06. I thank you, Alex. It's clear to me now that the data in the pivot tool is linked to detailed calculations, and when we change the summary data, we can see their changes in detailed calculations for each product. I also find it convenient that the forecast data remains unchanged and we can compare what the system forecasted and what we set as the plan for the corresponding period. You've noted that correctly, Max. This can also be a trigger to implement demand stimulation measures if the sales plans are set above the system's forecasted values. Now, I'm going to increase sales for brand 15 and at the same time, phase out weak product positions from it. I'll set a filter for this brand to focus on. I see that I can eliminate one position. Let's say I want the sales volume from this position to be distributed to other brand positions. 
I set the percent forecast for SKU 098 to 0 for three periods, and we see how the sales volume evenly redistributed among the remaining positions with the overall sum for the brand remaining the same. Quite a practical mechanism. Could this be useful when phasing out items and transferring their sales volume to new products? This mechanism has many applications, including if you plan by regions, distributors, or sales channels, you can redistribute sales among these entities, increasing or decreasing their share in the total sales volume. As you can see, all total sales plans are converted into quantitative expressions, and we will continue working with this brand. My task is to increase sales. I will add 5 million to the overall sales for the brand. We see that the sales volume has been redistributed to the remaining product positions. There was a proportional decomposition, i.e., a redistribution of the changed amount. Planning marketing activities for such growth, for now, will remain behind the scenes. My goal was to demonstrate the capability of working with aggregated data and its conversion into detailed records. I like that all recalculations are done in real time and the final cells that are usually calculated by formulas can be changed. And what's surprising is that it not only doesn't overwrite the summation formula, but also allows redistributing sums. With such a tool, the planning manager's work with the pivot tool looks quite productive. Now I want to demonstrate how you can change the selling price in future periods for several items. For the convenience of copying, we will leave only the price measure in the pivot tool. I will sort the table by price and start raising the lowest prices. As you can see, you can set a price for one month, then copy it to other periods or products. Everything here is like in Excel. You can also copy values from Excel and paste them into this table cells. Prices have been updated. We save. We move on to detailed calculations to check that changes have been saved in the detailed calculations. A new price is set here, and in the history, you can see the previous value. It's worth noting that all price-dependent sums have also been updated. It looks like we have completed our virtual sales planning task. All that remains is to check the result. Returning to the pivot, we see that the total revenue in July is 35 million. We go to the analysis dashboard and see that the sales curve in July does not show a drop, and we will assume that the manager would have been pleased with such plans, as well as the speed of their preparation. Alex, it seems you not only tackled the task of efficient sales planning, but also unveiled the fascinating world of web SCM for us. It's much more than just a tool for planning and forecasting. It's precisely what many companies need to remain competitive in today's market. I'm sure our audience will be eager to learn more about the capabilities of your product in the future. Thank you, Max, for these thought-provoking questions. I know our viewers are just as curious. Rest assured, we're ready to answer every comment you make. Subscribe to our channel. Give it a like. We provide only valuable information for business optimization. And if your business involves selling products, sign up via the link in the description to test out Web SCM. Improvements in your business are easier than ever with Web SCM. See you soon.